In this unit, we are going to learn about the Soil Conservation Service Curve Number Method or commonly called as SCSCN Method. Soil Conservation Service was part of US Department of Agriculture and now it is called the Natural Resources Conservation Service. So the new name for SCSCN Method is NRCSCN Method. So in some literature you may find SCSCN method or NRCS curve number or CN method and they both mean the same. So what is SCSCN method? So basically this is an empirical method that was developed by the Soil Conservation Service to estimate total runoff from agricultural watersheds. So basically if you know what the total amount of rainfall is in order to find out the total amount of direct runoff, you can use this method. So this was not developed as an equation to find out infiltration. It is a method to get excess rainfall or direct runoff. And the reason that this method is not for infiltration has to do with how it was developed. It was developed by using total amount of daily rainfall so it does not involve the time component and also it does not involve rainfall intensity. So the amount of direct runoff or excess rainfall that you get from total rainfall is a function of cumulative rainfall or precipitation, soil type land use and antecedent moisture condition. So that's why technically this is not a method that you can use to calculate infiltration rate or cumulative infiltration but because after you calculate direct runoff the amount of water that was lost you can assume that it was lost for infiltration. So you can think of this as an infiltration method but this was not developed for that purpose. This method was also developed using data from watersheds that were smaller than 400 square miles and it was mainly developed to study before and after hydrologic response from rainfall or storm events. Because this is an empirical method, uh, there are certain assumptions that are used in this method. So what you see on the right is a rainfall hydrograph and then you see three parts in this rainfall hydrograph. So PE is the excess rainfall or direct runoff, IA is initial abstraction and FA is continuing abstraction or you can think of also as soil retention. So this method assumes that when you have total rainfall, a part of that rainfall is used to satisfy surface storage, interception and so on and that part is this initial abstraction. So you cannot generate direct runoff unless you satisfy this IA or surface storage. So the maximum amount of direct runoff that you can get is total rainfall minus this initial abstraction and that is what you see here. So that is the maximum runoff that you can get by using this method. Now the second part of storage that this rainfall will satisfy is the soil storage and this is this FA part. Now the amount of water that you can lose to soil has a maximum value and that maximum value is designated by this variable S here. So FA is basically used to satisfy S. So when we get rainfall, some part of that rainfall is used to satisfy the surface storage and some part is used to satisfy the soil storage. And if you look at this expression, the amount of water that is used to satisfy the soil storage is total rainfall minus initial abstraction and then this is the direct runoff or you can reorganize this and you can say the actual amount of direct runoff that we have is total rainfall minus initial abstraction minus this continuing abstraction or soil retention and 
In developing this empirical method, what SCS found was that the initial abstraction was 20% of the maximum soil retention, so IA is equal to 0.2 times S. And finally, this method assumes that the ratio of actual direct runoff or excess rainfall PE over the maximum excess rainfall or direct runoff, which is P minus IA, is equal to the ratio of actual soil retention over maximum soil retention. So this is the main assumption of this method, that this ratio of soil retention over maximum soil retention is equal to actual direct runoff over the maximum direct runoff. And when you simplify this expression, you end up with this equation, which is the SCS equation for calculating excess rainfall or direct runoff if you know the cumulative rainfall, which is P. So in this expression, we have the total cumulative rainfall, initial abstraction, and that maximum soil retention, S. So if we know S, and IA, we can find out what the excess rainfall is by using this expression. The SCS also found out that the initial abstraction for most of the watersheds that were studied was equal to 20% of S. So we can simplify this expression further and we end up with this expression where we only have S as our unknown and if we know the total amount of rainfall, we can find the excess rainfall if we know S. The other thing we need to know about this expression is that this expression is only applicable when the expression inside this parenthesis in the numerator is positive. So in other words, if the cumulative total rainfall is less than the initial abstraction, then there is no direct runoff or no excess rainfall. So PE is equal to zero when P is less than 0 0.2 S. So before we use this expression, we have to make sure that P minus 0 0.2 S is positive. So what we have here is an expression to find out excess rainfall if we know the total amount of rainfall, which is P. But in order to find PE, we need to know what S is and how do we find out S is something that we will find out in the next slide. So what SCS did was they plotted the cumulative direct runoff on y-axis and they plotted cumulative actual rainfall on x-axis. And what they found was that there are some watershed where the cumulative direct runoff is higher for the same amount of cumulative rainfall. And then there are some watershed where the cumulative direct runoff is smaller for the same amount of cumulative rainfall. And they came up with these curves. And you can see that each curve has a value. So as the curve number is higher, the cumulative direct runoff is higher for a given cumulative rainfall. And as the curve number decreases, the amount of cumulative direct runoff that we get for the same cumulative rainfall is lower. So for example, if the cumulative rainfall is six, as we go up or as the curve number increases, the amount of direct runoff that we get increases for the same amount of rainfall. So in other words, higher the curve number, the amount of direct runoff that we get is higher, and smaller the curve number, the amount of direct runoff that we get is smaller for the same amount of cumulative rainfall. So if we know where our watersheds fall on this curve, then we can find out this S, which is the maximum soil retention, by knowing the curve number. So if we know the curve number for our watershed, we can find out what S is. And if we know S, we can find out direct runoff for a given amount of rainfall. The question then is, how do we get the curve number? So SCS also published this table 
and what you see in this table is that the curve number which are these values that you see here in four columns is a function of hydrologic soil group A, B, C and D and it is a function of land cover. So if you know the land use for your watershed and if you know what kind of hydrologic soil group you have you can get the curve number for any given area or watershed. So for example if we have a good condition made of and if the hydrologic soil group is C the curve number is 71. And this table shows what the hydrologic soil group A, B, C and D means. So basically if you look at the description of A, B, C and D you will see that a hydrologic soil group of A has a high infiltration rate so you can think of this as a well drained sandy soil and as we go from A towards D the infiltration rate decreases. So a hydrologic soil group of D means that it will have very slow infiltration and these are clay soils or high water table or shallow impervious layers. So wherever water cannot infiltrate easily that will be D and as we go up the infiltration rate increases. Also the values that we see in that table earlier they are meant for normal soil conditions. So what that means is the soil is neither too dry or too wet and we call that as normal soil condition and AMC stands for antecedent moisture condition. So the normal or a normal antecedent moisture condition is considered type 2. If the soil is dry or antecedent moisture condition is dry so that will be type 1. So the value that you get from th that table earlier that we saw needs to be modified by using this expression and if the soil is wet we again have to modify the value that we get from the table by using this expression. So this is what the curve number method is and how do we get curve number by using that table. The question then is how do we do this in GIS. So in GIS what we usually do is we get soil data. So what you see here is a sample and there are two hydrologic soil groups in this area. We have hydrologic soil group A, we have hydrologic soil group C. On this soil type we overlay the land use. So you can see we have two land use types forest and medium residential. So we overlay these two data sets and then we look up what the curve number is for a given soil condition and land use. So for example in this case we have the hydrologic soil group of A and we have forest so this the curve number is 30 so we create a curve number for that overlapping area as 30. So here we have medium residential and hydrologic soil group of C and if you look up that table we have 81 here and then in this area where the soil hydrologic group is C and land cover is forest we end up with a value of 71 from this table. So in GIS basically we overlay soil and land use and we have a lookup table where we extract the curve number based on the land use and soil data and we create a curve number raster. So this is what we are going to learn in the following units and this unit was basically to get an overview of what the SCS curve number method is and how we use that in estimating total runoff if we know the total rainfall.